Greetings, beloved. Thank you for joining us today. Have you ever wondered why so many women are not equipped for marriage? It's because being a woman does not make you a bride, no more than being a woman makes you a mother. As with so many things in life, there's a process that leads us to our desired end. If your desired end is to be a bride according to biblical standards, then you have tuned in at the perfect time. Chapter 2 of the book of Titus tells us that the aged women should take the younger women through the process of becoming not just brides for a day, but brides for a lifetime. So stay tuned for more of Brides Made with me, your host, Renee Bolden. Good morning and greetings again to everyone. I had previously asked if um, anyone had any comments that they wanted to share from last week's discussion, and I had three, but I don't think a couple of you were in here, so I was just going to ask if you um, had anything. If not, uh, no worries. But I'm going to ask Modesty to go first, and I think, Lori, you said you had something also, and then um, then Leah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was just wanted to share that I could see the um the difference, like the main thing that was sticking out to me last week, just because of it's something that that I guess I had really been thinking about, and I felt like the Lord was really bringing to my attention, and like the weeks prior to it was um t- like tightening up on being structured, and so. Um, I left here, like, with my mom, like, okay, Lord, I hear you. Like, this is something I really, really have to reel in. And so I could see the difference in, how can like, whenever you are structured and you know already what you're doing versus just, because, like, for me, it was like, like, I have a routine every day um because my my work schedule is different every day so some some things are the same but some things I adjust because of how my work schedule is and so it's like I was relying on like I know in my head this is what I do and this is how I do it whatever but I found that outside of the things that are kind of already just like set in stone I could freestyle the rest of the time even if it was something productive like for example I might be working on something and instead of me having outlined how much time I'm going to spend on that thing, then I might spend three or four hours on that one thing when I still have other things that I have to do. And so I could see a difference. Like there were days where I'm like, okay, this is, I'm looking ahead. I know exactly what's what I need to do and I know how I'm going to do it. And then there were some days that I did slack off and I'm like, oh, this is, I see the difference in just feeling more, um, at peace probably is a better word. Just kind of knowing ahead where you can plan and if something happens where your plan has to change, you're not, like you're not completely thrown off, you can adjust a little bit better versus um, just kind of going off script. And that was something that I saw that I knew I'm like, this is an extra step that I have to take for myself of, it's one thing to have a plan in place, but you gotta follow it to the T unless something outside of your control happens where you have to adjust, but not just Kind of like how you say, um, like exceptions to the rule shouldn't become the rule. They should really just be one-off things that you that happen every so often where you have to adjust, but not become your everyday. Like, okay, the exceptions are the rule, and so that was something that I noticed. Where um, just for me, I'm like, okay, I really, really see the importance of like having things. To me, I would say more tightened up. <clears throat> and one other thing I'll say in addition to that was um, that one of the other things that was the driving force for me in that was, um, I think, I can't remember if it was Sister Jones or somebody said, they're talking about being able to be reliable and dependable. And I think that came up this past week when we were talking about being structured, because if you don't have that structure, you can't be dependent upon to do the things that you're supposed to do or be dependent upon to be available to do other things because you're always playing catch up. And so um, that was just something that I wanted to share that I could see the difference play out and the importance of just being consistent. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am, I um, got a lot out of this message. 
Um, one of the things that I saw this week was, well, it, I was meditating on it um, after the message, and then I saw it this week where, where I re- respond to people's bad attitude. Um, and so this week I tried my best to respond like with a soft answer and it did actually turn away wrath. <laughs> like it changed the atmosphere when I just work on myself and not try to control everyone else's spirit. That, that really, um, was something that stood out to me last week. Um, also when you were talking about how, um, we can be resource. We're we're supposed to be resourceful as women. The Lord put that in, in us to be thinkers and to not just go out and get everything new. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've gone out, I've thrown away a whole room of things and just got everything new because I thought that's what it. I thought that's what I needed, but really it was just working against my own nature. And so um, this week I found myself like organizing things that I just kind of look at like, like I, I, I can keep things clean, but there's certain things like this is one bathroom drawer that has been a mess for months and months and nobody's done anything with it. And so I finally cleaned it out this week (laughs) and I just felt so much better. Like, so I want to really, um, make sure I'm working on those things. And also I was thinking about my mother, how she was, whenever I was sick, I'd go into her bedroom and I, and she'd get right up with me and she was really good with, um, comforting me when I was sick. But for some reason that did not carry over to me and with my daughter. And it's almost like it would make me aggravated when she was not feeling well. And I don't know why. Um, but that was something that I repented for this week. And then she, she did not feel good one night this week. And I was completely different and it wasn't like I was fighting aggravation, but it was like, I was a nurturer and took care of her like I should. (laughs) So that was a blessing just to know that these things that the Lord puts in us, we need to work on these things. Um, Also, oh, (laughs) so there was one day, the, (laughs) the week of the message, I think it was that Wednesday before the message. I we had we were going to have uh, fellowship the next day, so I knew I couldn't do the things I had to get done that night because we were going to have fellowship. So I moved them to the night before, and it was like an unexpected thing. And so I had a, we had school. I had I had to teach Avis like two math lessons. I had to learn them myself, and I I had to cook, and I had all these things, and I it was a bad night. It was a really overwhelming bad night. (laughs) And so, and I have been feeling like that lately. Like, um, I've been feeling like I'm not really wasting time, but still feel like I can't keep up with what needs to be done. And I also want to make sure I'm concentrating on things and meditating on the word. That's the most important thing. But I'm, I have been letting the cares of this life get in the way of that. And it's just kind of making me just feel anxious all the time. And you, you had talked about, um, like if we're helping someone, our, if our mind is on just our tasks that we have to get done, that that's not still not the right attitude about it. So I've been really trying to just be in the moment and, um, of course, praying and asking the Lord to help me. That, that, that was like the most important thing this week that I've just been doing, just asking him to um, help me not to be overcharged with the tasks and, and getting things done and just help me to structure myself um, so I can get things done without being overcharged with it. Um, <clears throat> oh, and also, there were there were things. Um, I remember growing up, I would see like grandmas and how like they they had these things that they cooked for their family that was they were just known for things like they just made you feel so at home. And I those things did not. I don't feel like that. I'm like that. But it was just good to know that the Lord put that in me and I have to develop that. Mm-hmm. So that was that was really important for me to um, learn this week. And I think that I think that was it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Leah, are you ready?
Yes, ma'am. I was really grateful for um, everything that was um, spoken about last week. Um, the first thing that stuck out to me was the atmosphere in which you were talking about. Um, I definitely could see myself in that, and I intend on continuing to change those things, um, making sure that I'm not letting um, my emotions overcharge me and um, just continuing to be obedient in, in things that I know to be obedient in so that I don't give way to the enemy. And something else that stuck out to me, it was it was funny that you were saying this the way that you said it, was the organizing. Um, my dad had got me a wardrobe, and I remember put things in it, but it got all disorganized and cluttered. I was throwing things in there because we were having fellowship, and I was like, it is what it is. <laughs> so um, the week of the message, um, I had decided, I'm, I'm cleaning this thing out. Like, it needs to be cleaned out. And my dad asked if I can put some of his things in there, so I was like, I need to clean this out. And so um, it's funny because I was, I kind of feel like I was getting frustrated, but then I was like, why am I getting frustrated over cleaning out a wardrobe? Um, and so I fixed my attitude about it and I intended, well, I intended, I got everything done and I got everything organized and I still have space if I wanted to use it. Um, and so something else that stuck out to me as well was when you were talking about the, um, like developing things that are in us and a way that kind of popped up in my mind to do that is like there are certain sisters in this ministry who specialize in things that I don't. So to reach out and to ask for help, um, kind of like what I did um, a couple years ago, I had a rip in my sweater and I went to Sapujo about it. And then like maybe if I need a certain recipe and I know like a sister specializes in this, then, then go go ask them about it. And so that's kind of what stuck out to me, and I was grateful to hear those things. Okay, thank you. I appreciate those comments, and I'm just going to say this one thing before we get into today's topic, unless someone else came prepared to share something. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to say this because I think this was very in, important, something that... Lori said about trying to focus on spiritual things while getting necessary responsibilities done, but not getting overcharged with them. This is very, very important for us as wives, as housekeepers, homemakers, as mothers. We have a great responsibility whether you have no children, one child, five children, 10 children, it doesn't matter. The The responsibilities are still the same. The added factor to juggling comes with the number of children that you add to the picture. But this is really, really important that we understand because this goes kind of back to something that was stated last week about us not taking breaks. So one thing we don't want to do when we're wanting to remain focused spiritually, we don't want to switch out and change out. Okay, God, from 10 to 15, 10 to 10, 15, I'm thinking about a note or from a sermon note. And then from 10, 15 to 10, 45, I'm washing dishes. And then I'm going to check back in. And then I'm going to check out. That's not the way you do that. Because if you do that, then you'll find that eventually you're going to lean to one side or the other, whatever is most comfortable to your flesh, whatever you feel like. So you gave a very good example. And I think all of us probably have done this or thought about it in some way. We have things that we just simply have to do. One of the ways that we're meditating on the word while we're getting things done, number one, is always checking our attitude in. And I think that's something that Leah just mentioned. She had to adjust her attitude. But that means we have to be checking. Is my attitude pleasing to the Lord right now while I'm doing this? So that doesn't require me to stop doing what I'm doing to go pull out a sermon note and to go pray. No, I just need to have that in my heart that I'm really examining myself. You know, it, does my attitude need to be adjusted while I'm doing this? You know, am I doing this as unto the Lord? And then as we are, if if we're listening when uh, during the discussion or a sermon is going forth or during, during fellowship when things are being shared and we're not rejecting what we're hearing, if we're praying, Lord, you know, like, help me to see this 
helped me to see how to apply this. It's going to come up again the same way Lori mentioned about her just being nurturing, you know, while while Ava was not feeling well. Those types of things will come to your mind to remind you, okay, this is your opportunity to put this into practice. So the idea is not to take a break from your responsibilities, but to make sure you're examining yourself by the word as situations arise, as you interact with people, as you um, think on things to know, okay, is this pleasing to the Lord? Am I doing what I heard this week? Because we all know whenever we hear something, we are going to see it come up that following week. All we have to do is look. All we have to do is pay attention. And so, the uh, again, the idea is not to switch one out for the other, but to keep that simultaneously because our life in Christ, is j that's just life. That's just what it is. It's just life. And so if I'm washing dishes, I can I can think back, you know, number one, again, am I doing what kind of attitude am I even doing this in? Am I getting frustrated because I have to wash dishes? You know, and why would I? You know, why would why would that be an issue? You know, except I'm not embracing some part of my nature that's causing me to be frustrated by doing any number of things. So the the key to it is to when we hear the word to receive it and ask the Lord to show us, you know, show me how to apply this in my everyday life. But that means every day we're really examining ourselves and, and listening for the Lord. So I just, I just wanted to point that out that it's not a either or type of thing. They go hand in hand because when we say, Lord, you know, I want you to lead me and I want you to guide me. He's leading us and guiding us in everything. So we, we can't say, oh, well, I learned how to wash dishes when I was seven years old. So, Lord, I don't need your help with this. I don't need to talk to you right now. I don't need to inquire of you right now. No, because there could be something that the Lord may want to speak in that moment, may want to bring to my attention in that particular moment. You know, sometimes it can be so slight and so simple Sometimes I may have several things to do and I may wash a few dishes, you know, from a meal, put them in the drying rack and I'll give them, okay, by the time I finish doing this other thing, these dishes will be dry and I'll come back and I'll put them up. Well, sometimes I just hear, no, do it now. And I, I don't wrestle with why, but the idea is that I can hear that and do it because I'm still listening. I'm not so consumed with these actual responsibilities that the Lord can't speak to me and I've had so many instances even cooking a meal it was you know one time just here recently I I was gonna cook a meal and I think it was on a Saturday morning and so I was thinking should I no it might it might have been a Sunday morning it's like I was thinking of two different options I had one was going to be the easier option and the other one was just going to take not much longer, but it still was going to require more effort and a little bit more time, a few more dishes. And I was kind of going back and forth in my mind. And I'm like, why is this even a thing in my mind? You know, and I heard the Lord say very clearly, don't, you know, don't choose the easier option. Because oftentimes that's what we do in life and it stunts our growth. Don't go with the easy option. And so what did I do? I went on and I cooked the breakfast that required more dishes, that took a little bit more time, that required more effort. And that's how we are staying spiritually minded throughout the day and applying these things that we're hearing, not just switching one out for the other, but always having our mind on the Lord and allowing the Lord to speak to us. So I just wanted to share that. Uh, when I heard Lori talking about that, you know, I thought that that's a really, really important thing for us to be able to do um, just in everyday life. So I thought uh, there was a comment that I think I'll get to just a little bit more into in today's discussion that Modesty made that kind of fits right in with what we're going to talk about <clears throat> just a little bit today. And... <laughs> It's so funny. I guess I'm going to ask this question, and it's a rhetorical question. I'm not really looking for answers, but you can think about it. Do you know the difference between, or do you know that there is a difference <laughs> between having a male authority in your life um, versus actually submitting to the leadership of a male or a man, a male authority? 
And I thought about that because oftentimes whenever we're having these discussions, I'll use the term, you know, um, having male authority, uh, what a woman will or will not do with or without male authority. And I, I thought about that a little bit further as I was just looking back over my own life. <clears throat> I thought about some, some different things that played out. And I started to think about male authority. And I just want to say this one thing. You know, m there are many... Uh, Several of you here can say, I grew up with a father present in my life, whether it was a biological father or um, a father, you know, a stepfather, whatever you may have been, even uncle or somebody who was like a father. But many of you have that, that testimony, if you will, that you had a man in your life. And I was just thinking about that. It's not enough to have male authority present. If we're not going to follow, if we're not going to submit to them, then we pretty much end up in the same position that we would if there was no male present. And so that was something that I was thinking just a little bit more about this idea that it's not enough to just say, yes, I have a man in my life. Yes, you know, because sometimes, you know, as women, as I have said in many different occasions, um, for many different situations, oftentimes we just give ourselves credit for the little piece of the pie. And never mind the rest of it is missing, but we'll, okay, well, yes, I, I, I have, I had a father in my life. And then the question is, did you listen to anything that he told you to do? Or did you have to, you know, you abandoned all his guidance and you just did your own thing and, um, you know, learned a lot of hard lessons. And so that's something that we really, really need to think about and put attention on. It's not enough to say, yes, I have, you know, even Apostle Bolden, you know, I, I have a man of God in my life. But are you listening to him when he's preaching and, and the word is going forth? Are you actually taking that word in and holding on to it? Because, again, it's not enough. It's great that he's a man of God, and it's great that he hears from the Lord the way he does. But if I don't listen and I don't take it, it's not doing me any good. It's only helping him if I'm not taking it. And so it is with any male that we are um, under the leadership of them. If we're not going to listen, then it just it's not going to benefit us. So I want to talk about myself. Not that I think that highly of myself. I think you just want to hear about me. But I'm going to talk about myself, and I hope you can relate to, to this, and I, and I know that you will. I'm not even going to say I hope. I, I know that you will, and I, my prayer is that, and I, I, don't, I don't think I have a whole lot to say about this, but my prayer is that women and sisters all over, whoever may get to hear this discussion at any point in the future, will really be... Uh, sincerely honest about the things that I'm going to share that they're able to identify with. And uh, we'll get a little bit more into that. I was thinking about myself. I was looking over my life. I was thinking about you all as uh, my sisters in Christ and other sisters that I know um, just people that I've worked with and things like that. And I, I began to just kind of ponder all the, uh, well, not all, obviously, but a lot of the bad mistakes that I've, I've made, a lot of bad decisions that I've made, the, the choices and the consequences, you know, uh, that came with that. And I was thinking about myself now. Uh, with all humility, I will say this. I know that spiritually, I've grown to some degree. I'm not where I was 10 years ago or five years ago. And with that, I'm, like I can see a difference in my ability to hear God's voice, for an example, um, to hear things like in, in a moment without being distracted and not being confused about whether or not it's God's voice. And if any of you have ever had a conversation with me, especially about anything personal where maybe you were looking for guidance, you may have detected um, the words of prophecy that may have come forth. Maybe we were talking and I said some things that I really, we didn't talk about it before, 
it was something that maybe happened in your private time, maybe between you and your husband or you and somebody else, but I spoke about it. Sometimes that happens right here in these discussions. I'm speaking about very, very specific things, um, but it's it's just um, the Lord just speaking these things because he knows what you're going through. It's not me. And so somebody might recognize that and be like, yeah, I like to do that. Because I remember I said that one time. I remember a lady had visited a church that I was at many, many years ago. And um, she had just come in town. She went to somebody in the congregation, said, the Lord told me to speak, to tell you X, Y, Z. And it was like on target. They didn't know each other. She was from out of state. She was visiting. And it was very a very, very specific question that this person had asked. And the Lord had given her the answer to give to them. And I thought, wow, I want to not only just hear the Lord's voice like that. I want to be bold be confident in knowing that I am hearing his voice and I want to be bold enough to speak it regardless to what it might sound like, whether I know what the situation is about or not. So that was something that I could clearly see operating in her, this lady. And and it might have just been a one time thing. I don't know anything about her life. I don't know enough about her life to know that the Lord continued to use her in that manner. But what I'm saying is that it was distinct enough that it caught my attention and I could see You know, there's something different about how the Lord just used her. And so you might be able to see a distinction also between maybe the way the Lord used me and maybe the way he's used you or something like that. You might be able to think, oh, you know, like I want to do this. And again, I'm in no way I'm saying this with all the humility that I can think of, but I'm, I'm saying it to make a point. I'm in no way trying to boost myself up or anything like that. What I'm saying is that you might notice a difference spiritually, the way you handle something, the way I handle something, maybe because I'm a little bit more mature than, than you are. So there is a difference, but this is what I'm saying. Sometimes we see people in that place and it's hard for us to connect to this idea that they were not born that way, that they were not just always that way, that they didn't just always make all the proper decisions. And that's where my mind went about myself. I was thinking um, back and and over my life, and I was like, gosh, I had such a raggedy mindset. I had never heard that term before used like that until <laughs> my husband started using that. He was like, that is raggedy. It's like, and, and it is. And when you, when I think about, if you just think about it in terms of apparel, you know, or, you know, things like that and what you might call raggedy. And I was thinking, gosh, I have seen some things with other people. And, you know, it's easy for us to look at other people's lives. It's easy for us to look at other people's mistakes and say, oh, that's just raggedy. You are, I think one term that people use is ratchet. That's one of the terms that people use, ratchet. Like, you just, whatever. Um, and so, uh, but I was turning the spotlight on myself. And you, you, some of you have heard some of these things in, I know one specifically you've heard in fellowship. And I, I think it's it's a humbling experience to look back over some of the things that you've done that people don't know about. Maybe they see you in your mature place and they don't know how silly you were at one time. You know, it's it's a very humbling experience. And I think we need to be able to look at that. You know, it, it doesn't matter if we have grown, if we've gotten to, you know, whatever the Lord has done for us. We don't need to forget um, where we've come from because it helps us to have mercy on people helps us to extend mercy and to be um, gracious. One of the things I, I'm not sure I know I've shared with this with several people individually, but I don't know. I don't remember if I shared it in the fellowship, but one of the things I thought back to was this one time my, my parents had gotten a car at um at an auction it was like a state auction and they were auctioning off the state vehicles you know sometimes state workers have um state vehicles that they use to do state work their department work from their office so they don't have to use their personal vehicle and so there was this auction and the vehicles were being auctioned off and um this we were there for something else but my mom ended up bidding on this and you know got this car and they gave me the car. 
for free. I needed. I don't remember what the situation was. I think this may have been at a time when. I can't remember exactly what the situation was, but I want to say the vehicle that I had at the time, the one that I owned was in the repair shop. And yeah, that's what it was. And there was just this ongoing dispute about what I owed versus what I had already paid and all of that kind of stuff. And so I needed a vehicle. And they were very generous, very nice enough to, you know, give that give me the vehicle. They gave it to me, put it in my name. It was mine. I owned it. So I didn't have to pay a note on it. All I had to do was pay the insurance and purchase gas for it, you know, and keep up the, you know, whatever maintenance. And do you know, in my silly mind, this was sometime within the, the next year, I had some expenses that came up, some situations that changed where I needed money. And... I did not seek the guidance of my parents. I didn't seek the guidance of anybody. I came up with all of this foolishness in my own mind. I need money. I have a car that can sell. So I'm going to sell the car and get the money for this situation. And I'll figure out how I'm going to get around some other kind of way. Just back to no transportation. As an adult with children. So I was putting myself in a position to have to rely on people, put put a, more of a burden on people than I needed to be because I had already been given a resource, a vehicle that would get me to and from. And I sold the vehicle. And even I think my mother has always had this business on the side for as long as I can remember. She's always had a business where she did um, uh, taxes and she's a notary public. So she did the paperwork for me to sell the vehicle that she gave to me or that they gave to me. And I, I'm I'm just, you know, I just have to put it out there. That was just one of the most inconsiderate, one of the most selfish things I could have ever done. But do you know, in that moment, in that time, my focus was only on, I need this money. Now, granted, I could have asked my parents for that money and they had it to give to me for what I needed it for. They could have given me guidance and said, you know what, maybe you should do this a little bit differently and you won't need all this money. Certainly don't sell the vehicle because now we're going to be back to the place where we're having to bring you to the store and do all these other things, you know. And so that was so, uh, today I just say that was just one of the stupidest things I ever did in my life like why would I as an adult who's responsible for myself be given something as precious as a vehicle and then turn around and sell it I didn't ask them if they wanted to buy it back and and, and just nothing oh no you can't buy it back because you gave it to me just completely selfish completely inconsiderate completely in my own mind, handling things. And that's what we think. We can see our lives falling apart. We can see a situation not going well. And we, as women, we feel bad, especially if you're an adult. If you're over 25, especially, you're like, you know what? I should know better. I should be doing better than this in life. I should be making good decisions. And so what happens is we can see something unraveling. But we have to find a way to put our two cents in it to try to make it seem like it's working. So that was my two cents. I'm going to handle this. I need money. And so the way I'm going to give, I'm not going to borrow money from anybody. I'm not going to borrow money from a bank. I'm not going to ask my parents for money because I'm an adult after all. So my way of being an adult and handling that was selling it. I was not thinking about the burden that I would cause doing that. I was only thinking about making myself look good in the moment that I didn't have to borrow money. Except later down the line, in essence, I was going to be borrowing money because now I'm borrowing your gas and your time and whatever else I, I might have needed transportation for. But I was not thinking about all of it. I was only thinking about, and this kind of goes right back to what we talked about last week about the emotions. 
I only I just feel what I feel right now in the moment. Never mind how it's going to affect tomorrow. I'm making this decision right now because all I know is that I need this amount of money. And if I sell this vehicle, it's going to get me this amount of money and I'll be able to take care of what I need and have extra. Except I didn't. Except I didn't. Why? I started off making a bad decision to begin with. Being inconsiderate, being selfish. And this is what I'm saying. Oftentimes we feel the need to step up and do something is to make ourselves feel like we're taking control of our lives. I didn't ask my stepdad about it. I didn't ask any of my brothers about it. I didn't ask any of my male cousin. Anybody could have gave me. I could have asked the neighbor. And the neighbor could have told me, don't do that. But what happened, and this is just an example, I did have access to male authority in my life, but I was not following. I was not asking for their guidance. And as a result, I did something so ridiculous. You know, just, you know, eventually, you know, things worked out. And But, but you know what? I ended up having to work a part-time job to save money to get the vehicle um, that I needed now, whereas I, I didn't have to. See, we end up paying for sin and we end up paying for being independent. We end up paying for not following somebody who's more mature than we are. We end up paying as women for not submitting to male authority when God designed us to do that. We pay the cost for that. So that was just one one example. Another one is the one that you've heard a possible to mention in fellowship about when we met and me getting the $75 or $70 oil changes. I didn't know any better. It, but listen, here's the thing. I did not ask anybody. Did not ask anybody at all. And again, this was my need to feel like I have taken control of my life. Because that time in my life, I was not married. And, you know, when you've been married or if you've been in a relationship for any length of time and it ends as a woman, it's like you feel you feel the sting of it. And you feel the need to try to prove that you still have some worth. You're not broken. You have it all together. This this relationship didn't break me. I can still go on with life. And and what happened is I ended up trying to do a lot of things independent of male authority that I actually had access to. And so as a result, everybody else is paying what at that time it might have been $20, $15 for an oil change. And I was paying $70, $75 cuz I didn't know any better. So again, we pay for it. It costs us not to follow the man that we should be submitting to. So again, here's my example. I had access to all kind of male authority and Wait, here's another one f for this. There was a guy that I grew up with. Him, he and my brother were like the best of friends. He was a mechanic. I guarantee you if I had asked, he would have done it for free. He, I'm sure he would not have charged me, but I did not ask. I had this need to prove that I'm an adult. I'm in control. I'm responsible for my life except I was just messing up things. And you think, from the outside looking in, you can think, why in the world wouldn't you have just asked somebody? It seems so simple, except when we are determined that we're going to be in control and no man is going to tell us anything, that stuff just plays out in all kinds of ways. And we end up just basically it exposes the raggedy mindset because that's really what it is the mindset that I can do this without you I can do this on my own I am in control of this I'm you know I I I have it all together when we really don't because I did not have it together and if you had seen me in public the way you know I talked about how vain I was you know I was listen I was going to be decked out I, I I wasn't walking around like I was like I had low self-esteem. I was walking around like I owned the world and everything falling apart. 
but you would not have known that why because the need to look like I have it all together and that's what we do but it, it, it doesn't work and we end up doing more damage than good because when we get to that place that we have to humble ourselves for real it's hard it becomes really difficult to truly humble humble yourself when we've spent all this time. Well, hey, I got the money that I needed when I sold that car. Well, I got that oil changed and I didn't need a man to help me with it. And all along, we're we're making these silly mistakes because, and I just have to say, the raggedy mindset of thinking that we can do this. We can be independent of male authority. We don't really have to submit. You can tell me, but what you say is optional. Or I'm, I may or may not even bring it, bring this to your attention. Oftentimes what we would do and what I did was I, I wasn't, I didn't grow up in an era where, where adults went to their parents, you know, like for money and things like that. So I didn't, I didn't have that mindset. But there was a time when I really, really needed help. And I was like, okay, I just, I came up with the plan. I was like, listen, if I could borrow this and this is my plan to pay it back, then I would appreciate it if you helped me. We came to an agreement and I paid them back, you know, I think over the course of three or four months, something like that. But one of the things that... I think in my mind doing that, I was still in a sense giving myself credit for being in control when I wasn't. Oh, I have a plan to pay you back, but I never should have been in a position to even have to ask you for because of my bad decisions. So that was, that's one aspect of it. And then you have the other aspect of just being too proud to ask for guidance you know there's a difference between what I did and what should have happened I went already with a plan in place and I said okay this is what I plan to do will you finance it versus this is my issue this is what I'm faced with I've made a lot of bad decisions already and I don't want to mess this up. Could you help me come up? Look at the plan that I have and tell me, would you do anything different? Should I do something different? Is this a, actually a good plan? Do you see something that could change about it? That's where, that's a lot of times where we don't go. We don't go, we don't take it that far. I have a plan because, hey, I'm smart enough. I have it all together. I'm an adult. I don't need you to tell me anything. I have a plan already. You just finance it for me. And what we're not considering is the fact that, wait a minute, I had a plan the last time and it ended up costing me. Then I had another plan and that ended up costing me. Well, well how many plans do we, that, do we have to have that fail before we start asking somebody else to help us? Okay, yes, I have a plan, but I'm not going to ask you to finance it. I'm going to ask you to critique it. Tear it apart. Let me know what's good about this and what's bad. What do I need to trash? Do I need to trash it all? And we we should be willing to, as women of God, knowing that we were made for the man, that we were made to be submitted to men, we have to be willing to say, you know what? I have had a raggedy mindset and it has shown up in my life over and over and over again. All these bad decisions, all these consequences, all this time it's cost me, all these relationships it's cost me, all this money it has cost me. It's time to do something differently. We can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again. This last um, thing that I'm going to share, it kind of goes in line with something I heard Modesty say, and this was about, you know, sp spending irresponsibly because this is something that I did. You know, I'll talk to anybody about, budgeting their money I I can I can help you one of the reasons I can help you is because I made so many stupid mistakes with money listen I was one when I was growing up um you know my mother I was never married when I was growing up so my entire life you know I did not have a man in the house one of the things that 
I can be assured of was that some kind of way, whatever job she was working, she paid the bills because I never, ever, I don't ever remember experiencing having the electricity cut off or the water cut off. So we didn't have food a lot of times, but we had the electricity and everything. So I knew that she was paying the bills. I could conclude that much. So I imagine that's something I took on that I'll at least get my bills paid. Unfortunately for me, this was the uh, the other part of my raggedy mindset was that I will make sure that my bills are paid. I will make sure that my bills are paid, but whatever is left over, I didn't have a budget. I, I'm just going to spend it however I want to spend it. It's just whatever store I get to first. That's who's getting the money. <laughs> That's just it. No no thinking about, well, I wasn't thinking about anything but the fact that, oh, I have a few dollars left over after paying these bills and now I get to have fun. That was, that was it. That was, now, and this is another deceiving part about my mindset. I was always thinking about the future house that would be built in my, um, what do you call it? My car, the car that I wanted, my my preference for a car and, and thinking, I was thinking about all sorts of luxurious things, but I was not doing one single thing. I was not putting anything into place to even obtain that. Even if I had the mind to go after it, I, well, I was spending all the money. I wasn't trying to save anything. And if I did save it, I found a reason to spend it. That was it. I can, I mean, I, and one of the things that I thought about in that moment, it was just a real simple memory, but sometimes my family would get together and we, you know, and I, I might do these foot long sandwiches and I'll pile up all these expensive meats in it. And just these, it's a gourmet sandwich is really what it ended up being. And I was just thinking, like, I'll just be spending money on just something silly like that. Now, everybody's bringing food and cooking, so it's got hot food. I didn't even have to contribute that. But I was going to be a part. I was going to look like I'm in control of my life. I have it all together. I have this extra money that I did not have. And I'm spending all this money. And, and I was just thinking about the way my mindset worked was, this is just what I want to do right now. So this is what I'm doing right now. The same exact thing I was saying about the emotions. This is the way I feel. So this is how I'm going to act in the moment. Never mind. It was training me basically to just not be responsible, not be responsible with money and not even understand the concept of coming together in a marriage again and having to be responsible with finances that because again like yeah and I've mentioned this before if I'm not responsible and I can just spend it on it at the drop of a dime and I'm not thinking about it I'm not even the one managing the money I'm just going to spend it that could easily put your family in a bind very very quickly because you don't know you're just spending according to your emotions according to how you feel I want to look good I want to look like I'm bringing something to the party because I want people to think I'm in control of my life and that I have it all together. All of this based on how we want people to perceive us. Never mind, again, raggedy mindset, raggedy life, everything falling apart. But we're going to put on, you know, we're going to we're going to put on a mask and pretend, you know, that everything is OK. And it goes back to the, the comment that Modesty made about having a few structured tasks throughout the day but then everything else is freestyling well I know I have to have I know I have to be to work for seven o'clock but I get off at two o'clock so from two o'clock to ten o'clock I'm freestyling oh I know I have to have dinner ready by four o'clock but after that it's just all up in the air I'm not managing any kind of time I'm just doing whatever I want to do things are going undone I'm spending all my time looking at recipes on YouTube, YouTube, listening to music, whatever in the world, you know, people are looking at on their reading articles and things like that. And that's the way it plays out. So we have the the emotional aspect of it where I can just be emotional in a moment. And this is just the way I feel, not worried about consequences. You have the the uh, 
time management part of it where you know I have things to do but I'm only going to do the things that or just absolutely set in place. I know I have to go to work for this time. I know I have to go to school for this time. I know I have to cook a meal by this time. But everything else, I'm just going to do it any kind of way I want to do it. And that doesn't work. We really have to think about, goes back to the consequences of our actions. You know, oftentimes, you know, we hear the term um, from rags to riches, and the term that I use, and I think I use it in another discussion, it was, you know, um, moving from raggedy to royalty. That was the term that I used. But when I was thinking about all these things, I thought, this isn't about material possessions, though. This is not about how much I can possess in this life and how much I can obtain. This is about a mindset, really, what kind of mindset do I have to have that somebody could give me something as precious as a vehicle and I turn around and sell it? That I have men in my life who would very willingly give me guidance on things, but I'm so bent on proving that I have it all together, that I don't need you, that I'm just making all these crazy mistakes because I want you to see me in a certain way. I need for people to think that I have it together. You know, what kind of mindset is it that, and this is, this is one that um, I think this is the last one I'm going to share, you know, concerning this is the, the monetary part of it. For years, for years, uh, growing up as a child, you know, we just didn't have much. That's, that was just the reality of it. I can remember very, probably once a year, going through bags of clothes that people had given us to see if I could fit anything in there, which oftentimes I fell on the short end of the stick because I was tall for my age. So a lot of times the pants were too short, the shirts were, you know, I just, uh, I didn't get a whole lot out of those bags, but I can remember people doing that. Let me tell you, when Modesty was born, somebody at my mother's job gave her um, clothes for her and I think it was enough clothes to last a full year when Jasmine was born it was just a lot of gifts that were given it wasn't the way that it was given in that manner but I didn't have to worry about the clothes and things like that um, of course when Kimberly was born she was given over to my aunt and uncle adopted into um, very well off. She didn't have to worry about anything. When Joshua came along, the same, the same exact thing happened. It was just some people that, that I went to church with. And um, they gave us, I think, three years worth of clothes. From newborn to three years old. Didn't have to purchase anything. And... I would think about those things and I, I began to pray, you know, like years before, before that in my early 20s, I'm like, Lord, people are always giving me things. I've always been on the receiving and like, I want to get to the point that I, want, I can be a resource to people. I want to be in a position to give. But you know, if my spending habits had not changed, if the only thing I'm doing is I'm going to pay my bills and I'm going to hurry up and spend everything up and just consume it up on my lust, then when in the world am I going to ever be in a position to be a resource to anybody? This goes back to what we were talking about the time. If you're not organized and you're unstructured, you don't have things in order, how are you going to give time to other people to help anybody else? Even emotionally, if you don't get control of your emotions, you can't be present for people. You know, we've talked about that before. You know, if you show up for somebody's special event, be there. You don't need to be all in your emotions reminiscing about how, you know, you're at somebody's wedding and you're thinking about how a relationship didn't work out for you or marriage didn't work out for you or how maybe you're in a marriage and it's not working out. That's not the time for that. Be present. But the way we do that is that we have to take control over our emotions, our, our time management, our finances, and it all goes to back to a mindset. 
So when we're talking about moving from raggedy to royalty, it's not rags to riches. It's not the possession of things, but it's our attitude about life. It's about the way we view things, whether or not we truly accept not only our nature, but the part of our nature that's meant to be submitted to a man. Whether or not we truly accept that, you know what, all of the junk, I could, I'm sure I could go down the line and tell you all sorts of things that I have done that was just out the box, just crazy. Why? Because I was not submitted to a man. I had men in my life, but I was not submitted to them. I was not seeking their leadership. I was not seeking their guidance. And as a result, and I have no doubt in my mind that the same thing that I'm sharing, other women can attest to the same thing. Oh, when I asked daddy this, I got a good result. But when I tried it on my own, I messed it up. And so forget about the men can do, um, women can do what uh, men can do and all of this junk that people have adopted because it doesn't get us anywhere. You can come up with all these cute sayings and all the cliches and you can get all the degrees you want in women and gender studies and all of that foolishness. And when it all boils down to it, in everyday life, the same thing is playing out. If you are submitted to a man and you are following his leadership, you are going to be more successful than you are if you are being independent and trying to figure it out on your own. That's, that's what I found out. Now, one of the main things that I find, you know, like with just being connected to my husband, following his leadership, listening to his voice, I'm in a position that being one with him, I can make decisions based on how he would do things. That helps me not to get carried away in my own foolishness because I feel like this the same way I feel about serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Without him, I still have the same raggedy mindset. Without my husband, I still have the same raggedy mindset. You can only default back to what was already there. I don't grow in the Lord and then abandon the Lord and keep, keep the benefits of the Lord. I don't grow as a result of being submitted to my husband and then remove myself from his leadership and then still reap the benefits of being submitted it doesn't work that way and I think oftentimes that's what women are doing oh wait I got a little nugget from you I got some wisdom from you okay now let me get away from you and do this on my own because I got it from here only we find out that we don't we still end up in the same situations over and over and over again okay yeah maybe this time it was emotions the next time it was money the next time it was time this time it was a job this time it was the children but it's still the same raggedy mindset that we need to change and that's what that was the conclusion of what i was saying you know as as i was thinking about my own life my goodness i would never want to return back to that Never. I would never want to go back to the place where I'm just doing things um, on my own. Why? You know, when the when the Bible talks about us being the weaker vessel, there's a reason for that. Because the kingdom of darkness takes advantage of the fact that we're emotional creatures. They know it better than we do. So what happens? We get all emotional and we're, you know about any situation, whether it's um, highly positive emotions or highly negative emotions, and we get carried away. But when we have, when we know that we have to be accountable to and answer to that man, it makes us stop and we think twice about how we're going to respond to things. Why? Because I have to answer to you when I finish doing this. Whenever I finish making this decision, I'm going to have to talk to you about it and tell you what I did. And it makes a difference. It's the difference between talking to our sisters in Christ or fe other female friends or family members who are just, again, give us a pat on the back for being raggedy. Oh, it's okay, girl. You'll get it right the next time, except you won't. Oh, it's okay, girl. We all make mistakes. Yeah, we do, but we don't have to make that many silly mistakes. Not when there's a plan in place for us not to. 
you know and so that was something that i wanted to share i'm again i could go into so many deep situations that just doesn't make sense but the point is and i think these covered you know three very important areas you know between last week and, and this week we have our emotions our time and our money that we need to have a different mindset about how we're doing things how we're living life and really accept this idea that life outside of the leadership of a man not the present male authority because male authority can be present but life outside of the leadership of a man has gotten us nowhere and I'm just going to say this be before before I close this out I want to say this to all of my sisters in Christ and this has to be very specific to my sisters in Christ who have said well I tried I tried following my male authority and we didn't get the best result this has been an ongoing conversation that I've had with sisters in Christ there have been some very real situations where a woman a wife has been submitted to her husband and maybe he did make some decisions that didn't necessarily turn out well for the family in that moment it, it wasn't detrimental for life it just maybe wasn't the result that you wanted in that moment for that situation that's a real thing why because sometimes um, things like that happen but here is here is my wisdom to you that is not your cue to be disobedient to the word of God and abandon your duty to submit that man who you're submitted to he has to um, he's accountable to the Lord Jesus Christ he has to answer for what he knows in that word it's not our job as wives to bring that to his attention and say, well, I don't think you're doing this according to the word. That's not our jobs. We're not, we're, that's not what we're supposed to do. That is not, that's not the position that we're in. So we're not as wives, because this, this is so, so, just through conversation and observation, this is so prevalent among professing godly women well I will follow him when he's following Christ and we make the mistake of judging our leaders and thinking well because you didn't do that the way I wanted it done or because we didn't get the result that I wanted then you could not have been following God that might not be it at all you not getting the result you want does not mean that he was not being led by the Lord and what he did it just means you didn't get your way in the matter we have to really learn to do like that word says and, and this is what it all boils down to me when i stand before the lord on my judgment day whatever day he decides to call me into eternity i am not going to be able to use my husband's decision making as an excuse for my disobedience we if if i say it i do i say it i do to every decision that he makes that's what I was saying I do to. That's something that we need to really think about. Because we think that submitting to our husbands or to whatever male authority means everything is going to always go my way just because I submitted. No, you need to submit because that's what the word says to do. Be obedient, grow and mature. That's it. Not it's not a witchcraft maneuver for you to get your way in everything. Oh, well, I submitted. So give me my way. Okay, oh, hey, I submitted today and I asked you for this, so give it to me. That's not how that works. And we as wives, we don't, and if we've done this towards our husbands, toward our pastors, toward um, our fathers, if we have done this thing where because something didn't go our way, we judge their character and their relationship with the Lord and accuse them of not being led by the Lord, we need to repent for that. Because we're not in a position, God didn't put us in a position to judge their decision making. We didn't, we were not given that. And so let's make sure we repent for that so that we can in fact submit because as long as that's out there where you feel like 
I judge this situation right and you were wrong, then you will not be able to submit. What we need to realize is that it's not, it's not an exchange system. It's not, okay, I submit and I get my way. No, you just submit and you get closer to the Lord and you grow and you mature and you get stronger. The exchange is your spiritual growth. Not you just getting all these natural things that you want as if, okay, well, as, as long as I'm a wife and, and you do what I want, then I'll do what you want. That's not the way that works. That's not the way. That's, that's a raggedy mindset. <laughs> Let's just call that what it is. That's a raggedy mindset because we're bargaining with the Lord about whether or not we're going to be obedient to his word. And we're not in a position to do that. Not with the one who could speak. And we have life and can speak and he taken in a moment, in a millisecond. We can be out of here. We're not in a position to bargain with the Lord about what he will and will not do in our lives and what will and will not go our way. The only thing we can do is be at the mercy of God to obey what it is he has set before us and hope that he don't charge us with the things that we've already done according to what we've done. That's, that's the mindset we should have. That's moving into royalty. That's what it is to move from raggedy to royalty right there. Lord, I know that I deserve much more than what you have charged me with. You have not, you have not disciplined me the way that I deserve to be disciplined. Not according to my bad attitude, not according to my raggedy mindset, not according to the um, sarcastic words that I have spoken, not according to my smart aleck attitude that I've had, not according to my willful disobedience. No, you have not disciplined me and charged me according to what I deserve. So, Lord, I'm at your mercy today. That's moving into a mindset of royalty. Lord, I'm at your mercy so help me, Lord God, to submit. Help me to have this mindset to understand that I really do need the man that you place in my life. So that I don't think I can do this outside of you and I don't think I can do it outside of him. And I think that's all. That'll uh, conclude our discussion for today. And I'll just say, as I always say, um, let's not live unto ourselves. You know, just like I, I said, you know, I prayed the prayer and asked the Lord to um, help me to be a resource, make me a resource to, to people. And I'm telling you, the Lord answered that prayer. The Lord answered that prayer in abundance. Um, my husband and I were just having a conversation um, just recently. And I was saying if if I had just sixty thousand dollars saved up with nothing to do with it. And I had to choose between using it to take a trip somewhere that I've always wanted to go or just take a trip somewhere to, to cater to my flesh versus handing it over to somebody to help them that hands hands down. Somebody else will get the money for food or electric bill or clothes or whatever it is they might need. Doesn't matter. I will give that up in a New York second. Why? Because to me, there is no greater fulfillment in moving beyond having your own needs met. There's no greater fulfillment in knowing that your own needs have been met, but then you can also extend that to somebody else. That life is not really not just about you. It's not just about, oh, well, my electricity is not getting cut off. But what about the neighbor? What about somebody else who might be struggling? Are we in a position to do that? And that's what our service mindset has to be about. It's not just about, Lord, I'm doing something in your kingdom and I'm reaping the, the benefits and the rewards of it. But do I have enough? Am I managing what you've blessed me with enough to be able to be a blessing to somebody else? And can I do it with the right attitude? Because sometimes we get besides ourselves and we can be a little high minded thinking that we've done something. Oh, well, I saved my money. Why aren't you saving yours? And you know full well you were just as raggedy as I was three years ago. And you needed somebody's help. And so let's not be high-minded. When we're talking about service, we're really talking about a, uh, a mindset and a place of humility. But we just simply know how to connect with people. And we understand that people have needs the same way we once have, had needs or still have certain needs, whatever they might be. 
but thanking the Lord that thanking the Lord that he has made us uh, put us in a position to be a resource and that we can do it from a place of love uh, from a place of service from a real from a place of compassion you know and again it takes us living outside of ourselves if if I don't take the if if I don't manage my time and I don't have time to talk to you then I don't know what your need is and I don't know how I can be a help to you see how all of that goes together maybe I did save the money but I'm not managing my time so I don't I don't even have time to talk to you even know what's going on in your life so that money that I save is not doing me any good I'm not being a resource because I'm not managing my time properly. So let's think about these things. When we're thinking about service and we're not living unto ourselves, we are truly living for other people. We have to manage everything so that even our time can be a resource to other people. We can serve with our time. We can serve. Um, It it was it was a blessing And, and it wasn't a very long time, but we we several of us ended up out there at Mount Carmel yesterday for different reasons it wasn't all planned but we still ended up out there and um, I think I had said good night to to Lori and then I went back or maybe I said bye I can't remember seemed like I greeted her thinking she was gonna leave and then when I went back she was still sitting there and I was thinking did I say something to make her think I wanted her to wait? I was just going in my mind like, I hope I didn't. And I asked her, I was like, so are you just sitting here because you just wanted to be here or were you waiting on me for something? Because I didn't want to just have her waiting. And she's like, oh, no, I heard you say you were coming back out. So I thought I'd just hang around a little bit longer. You know, you, you have no idea what something like that means. And I think, I mean, we may have spent maybe another 10 or 15 minutes together. But all of those types of things make a difference. When you're not in such a rush to get away from people and you say, you know, hey, I have 10, 15 minutes to wait just to, you know, you never know what kind of conversation might ensue. You don't know what might come up, you know, but if you're rushing off because you have better things to do and, you know, seeing somebody that because I, I don't I don't see Lori all throughout the week all the time. So to me, that was um I appreciate it, just the the mindset behind it, just taking a few extra moments, you know, to do that. And that's the way, so when we're talking about service, we we need to have time to be able to to serve. We need to manage our time and just be willing to say, you know what, I could be doing something else right now, but, you know, she just thought, well, I don't see Sister Bolden that much throughout the week, so I'm going to just take a few extra minutes and just wait, you know, just, and, and I appreciated that, but that's the mindset that we have to have that we we make time for people we make time um, and we make things important to us you know so I'm gonna just uh go ahead and end it with that and let's bow our heads and pray Heavenly Father we thank you we praise you and we glorify your name Lord God always for giving us uh these things to take to heart Lord God giving us guidance and helping us to just simply examine ourselves and uh, the things that you have done for us God I pray that you will let these uh, things that we've discussed stay with us throughout the week Lord remind us if situations arrive Lord God um, arise that we will know how to apply it to our lives and we pray and ask you Lord God that you will lead and guide us throughout the rest of this day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray amen